Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be looking at how to configure workflows. I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to successfully configure a workflow in a Jira project. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it really, really does help with the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. All right, so for this tutorial, you're going to want to be in one or two places. At the end of the day, you need to know the workflow we're going to be working with. So I find that it's easier to go into the project that you're going to want to configure the workflow for. Go to the project settings, come down to the workflow, and then identify the workflow name and the scheme. So you're going to want the scheme from up here and you're going to want to know the workflow over here. This is really critical because if you try to do this blindly, you're going to go into the main global settings for the workflow, find yourself very confused and overwhelmed with all the workflows available. And then you're going to have to go and reverse engineer this anyway. So if I were you start at the project level, so you at least know where you're at, but we're not going to modify anything within the project. We're actually going to want to do this at a global level. So to do that, once you kind of know the name, so I'm looking for the key FJC. Now I can click on the gear on the top right corner. I can go to issues. I know I don't understand why you would go to issues for the workflow, but we're going to the issues. And then on the left hand side, you're looking for workflows. We are going to be discussing workflows and the schemes in this video. So make sure you stay tuned and watch the entire video because I'm going to be giving you information and we're going to need to be talking about both and you will most likely have to configure both. All right, so exploring the workflows, you're immediately greeted with active workflows and inactive workflows. I want to talk about this for a second. Active workflows basically means a workflow that is currently in a project and that project is in use. Inactive means that the workflow exists in your Jira environment, but it's not actually used in a project. So it's just kind of like in a little purgatory of workflows, if you will. And so it's, this is really, really important because there's certain things that we can do in inactive workflows that you cannot do in an active workflow. And the biggest thing is deleting a status. So if something you're trying to do as part of your configuration and the reason you're watching this video is, Hey, I want to know how to delete a status from my workflow. Guess what? You can't delete it from an active workflow. So you will have to delete it from an inactive workflow, which should ponder the question of, how do I make an inactive workflow? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. So we are going to look for our FJC. FJC is going to be an active workflow because I just showed you that it was one of my projects. So to make it inactive, all you got to just come over here to the actions, make a copy of it. When you make a copy of it, it's always going to have this copy of software. I recommend that you delete this and actually do something meaningful. This is the default wording software simplified workflow for project X. I, what I typically do, and because this is the tip that I'm going to give you is I will call out the issue type that I'm going to associate this workflow with. And now you may be asking me why, why would I do that? Well, because out of the box, one workflow dominates all your issue types. If you remember back from the project um, that we were looking at, so I'm just going to go real quickly back into my project. If you remember from the project settings and under workflow, you'll notice and you'll observe that all of the issue types have that one workflow, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can actually make a workflow per issue type, or you can group a bunch of issue types together and then dictate and mandate them and how they like configure them in your workflow scheme, which is why we're going to talk about schemes in a bit, right? So typically when you're making a new workflow, you do have to ask yourself one or two questions. Is this new workflow or is this modification going to be for all the issue types? or for specific issue types. My experience is usually 30% a workflow change applies to all the issue types and 60, 70% is usually to just one specific uh, issue type. For example, I have teams that want their epics to follow a specific workflow and then they want the stories and their tasks to follow a different workflow and then they want their bugs to follow a yet a third. So why don't we go ahead and actually use that as, as an example to kind of guide the examples here. So jumping back into Jira, we're going to come over here and I'm going to make a copy and I'm just going to call this one for my Epic. So I'm just going to call Epic at the beginning. And, and actually I'm just going to put the pre, the project name at the beginning, FJC Epic software scheme. 
description you can modify if you want. That's up to you. But once you have that, you'll be greeted with basically the text version of this. I don't like the text version. I like to do this in the diagram. And here I can remove a status. So if I don't like blocked, I can actually hit remove status and I can do that. I can also add new statuses. So maybe I want, I have peer review. I want product owner approval, right? And so I can put that one in and then you're going to be greeted with this allow all statuses. What this basically means is do I want this arrow that says all to show up? If I click this checkbox, it will give me the dash all and I'll show you in a second. But in this screen, you do need to pick the category of status. This is in progress. This is not done yet. Work is still in motion. And then you can just stick it wherever you want. The actual order doesn't matter because Jira is going to give it to you alphabetically by category. So all your to do statuses will be grouped alphabetically, all your in progress ones and all your done ones. In this particular case, it'll just alphabetically put all my blue statuses since there's only one of the other ones. Anyways, now that I have this, there is actually no publish. There's nothing you got to do at this point because it's an inactive workflow. But this workflow is now ready for whatever I want to do, right? So maybe I want my epics to be approved by the PO. So I'm adding this item here. But maybe I don't have testing. So I can just actually remove the test that is from the epic because epics aren't tested in my specific scenario. So again, you can't do that if you're in an active workflow. If I try to delete that in test status, I'm going to be greeted with not possible. So that's pretty much that there. Now, some tips that I do want to give you, right, just while we're here, is you, once you add your statuses, you want to make sure you give the right category. Make sure you make sure you you're careful, right? You don't want to overburden this view with having 50 different statuses. You don't want to handhold your team's hand that much. You want to give them some autonomy. You want to make things clear, but you don't want to do like ready for in whatever finish with this step, right? You don't want to do three for each status because that's just overwhelming and will completely, it, it hurts a little bit more than it helps. The other thing is if you decide that you do not like these dash all transitions, which basically allows you to go from any status to any other status, you have the option to explicitly call out a transition. So let's just say that we want to go from to do to in progress. This is totally allowable. You just got to give it a name. So start progress. Right. And if you do this, I recommend that you remove the this all allow all statuses to transition to this one, because now the only way to go from to do to in progress is to follow this transition. But what I want you to be mindful of here is if you do a linear path, which is what most teams do. Great. Thumbs up. That's what yours is designed for. But I caution you, make sure you give yourself a path backwards, because if and at any point of your in progress is like nulled out like you don't it's not good and you want to move back to to do you can't because there is no arrow going back assuming that this all wasn't here right so if you go this route where you don't have the allow all statuses transitions available you want to be very careful because if you don't explicitly call out the route the transition is what it's actually called then you're going to get into some trouble and bad things will happen and you're going to be paying a lot of money to have a professional come and help you out so anyways take that tip Hopefully it helps you out uh, quite a bit. So once you have your workflow, everything's cool. Everything's done because it's an active. We have two options at this point. You can either a go back into your project and add the workflow, which basically means you'll replace it. Or if you're sharing a workflow, you see how this one's shared. I actually can't add it. So what I need to do is I need to go to the workflow scheme. Now the workflow scheme is, is very important because like, the schemes from issue types and from screens that we've explored in other videos, the workflow scheme is like a bucket. It's a container that puts things that go together and holds them together. So coming over here, we can actually go to the workflow scheme for the FJC. And so I'm going to go look for my FJC one. There is no easy search button here. So I'm just going to hear Here it is for FJC, right? And so I'm just going to go and edit this one. And so once I'm editing it here, you'll notice that for all the issue types, it's going to get this workflow, but I made a special workflow for my Epic. So here I can actually add my new, and these are not alphabetic order. So now I can go and add my FGC Epic, which I just made, click next, call out the Epic here, click finish. And now it's here. And all I have to do is publish. And when I do that, and I basically tell you, okay, yeah, and test was in test. We'll move it to in progress whatever that's the mapping is kind of important, but not in this particular case, because I didn't have anything, but you are definitely going to want to pay attention to that mapping, especially if you remove a status. 
right? But once it's there, once you've done this publishing, if you go to your project and I hit refresh, you'll notice that my Epic now works. Now, the other alternative was if you would have made completely from scratch all new workflows and then a whole new scheme, then your option here would have been to switch the scheme and you could have picked another scheme that already was kind of pre-configured in an inactive state. So those are your options there. Um, I try to keep it simple. I try to just append to an existing project and I try to append to an existing workflow. But you do want to keep in mind that the pecking order is your workflow is at the lowest, right? So if we're going back to my Bushka doll um, examples that I like to give out here, right? Your workflow is at the lowest level. You stick one or many workflows into a workflow scheme. And then that scheme is then associated to your project. And just keep in mind that every issue type has the possibility. You don't have to do this, but every issue type does have the possibility so that you can apply a specific workflow just to that issue type. Once you do all this though, the last and final step before I wrap up this video is you want to go back to your board and you want to be very mindful of what status to show up on your board because these, the board and the statuses here in the columns are dependent on what statuses are available in your workflow. So you'll see that my PO approval is out hanging to the side. And in this particular case, because epics don't go through my active sprint workflow, it's okay for it to stay on the side. But if I would have added a brand new status to a story, I would want to come into my board and bring that column back in and add that status into my column so that I can then use it effectively in my day-to-day -day sprints. So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got value out of it, please make sure you drop a like. Share this with your friends, coworkers, colleagues, whoever else you know that has struggled or is looking at workflows and specifically their configurations. It might be beneficial for them. And finally, if you haven't already subscribed, some 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So why don't you smash that subscribe button, help me grow these numbers, help you get notified when I drop these amazing videos for you. And it just makes the whole world go around a little bit better. So thank you very much. Appreciate you tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of sh** come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to